So for today, we're going to be looking at the big ass TWAB that Bungie just released. It is massive. I will probably try to do everything. If not, I'll cut it up into multiple videos. But essentially, this is a lot of stuff, guys. So I might have gameplay in the background. I might not. I don't know yet. Uh, I haven't played Destiny 2 in a while, so all of my footage is very old. But I might still have some Gambit footage. I don't know. We'll see. Plop it up right now. Anywho... Uh, welcome to the Enclave. Sabathun is building an army of hive. These aren't just ordinary hive, mind you. They've become the lucent brood. How could this be happen? What will the Vanguard do as we begin to question the line between light and dark? As you begin to unravel the mystery and battle the Witch Queen's brood, you'll discover the Enclave. This will be your destination for weapon crafting. Crafting a legendary weapon from scratch is in a simple matter finding patterns sync weapon blueprints collecting materials and building your weapon is the starting point after crafting your tool of destruction you'll begin to unlock its full potential through combat beginning your quest to craft early in the witch queen campaign you'll be given a, an introductory uh, quest that runs you through the ins and outs of crafting and the first and second missions of the witch queen free to all players guardians will uncover the deep sight ability and be introduced to the enclave so i've already read i've skimmed a bit of this uh it's pretty interesting i'm not gonna lie uh let's we'll just keep going and then i'll give you my thoughts while we're going through but this is where you'll begin to shape your first clave, a brand new weapon archetype being introduced in the Witch Queen. All of the necessary materials will be provided for your first crafted weapon, but you'll also be giving a short tutorial on how to find those materials for future crafting. A subset of weapons and archetypes will be craftable from the start, but more will be added in the future. In order to shape your future tools of destruction you'll need to do a little bit of research first patterns are your first requirement some of some will be required through quest completions while others can be earned by completing various gameplay objectives once you earned your desired pattern it can be crafted at any time with the required materials now it's all about the mixings so this is pretty interesting because I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to actually pick your actual archetype for your weapon, which is wild. Absolutely wild that they might do this. I'm not saying you can. Let's find out more. After reaching the Enclave and crafting your first glaive, random, randomly rolled weapons throughout the game have a chance to drop with a new ability, Deep Sight Resonance. This will be used as you begin to target specific traits to craft. As an example, if you find a Deep Sight Resonance Legendary Auto Rifle with the Rampage perk, you can complete an object objective and extract the essence of the perk to then craft a weapon with Rampage or another perk that increases damage. So this is all cool. You can even see like a picture of like the outline of how it will look when you get something like that. My only concern is it kind of sounds like there's you, you I took this two ways either we are going to be able to unlock the rampage perk and have it there forever or you have to unlock the rampage perk and then it kind of like you only have one one hit for it and then you can you have to you like you have to find another weapon that has rampage again if it's the first one I'm completely fine I think having them unlocked forever makes more sense if it's more like a re or like a like a currency where you have to have a weapon with rampage or with x uh with x perk that's going to be a little bit more annoying because then at that point you're going to have to like hold a lot of weapons just in case you want to use i don't know i i hope it's the first one but i wouldn't be surprised if it's the second one Also, here's a picture of the deep sight resonance actual thing if you guys want to read it or look at it uh SMG looks pretty cool, but yeah, this is how it's gonna be and then once you complete it This is how it's gonna look and Like current weapons not every weapon pattern will be compatible with every trait But you'll find a good list of traits to mix and ism and match as you customize a given weapon to your desired specifications It doesn't stop there though through the enclave You'll also be able uh, to kick things up a notch and enhance your traits to strengthen their flavor leveling your weapon and enhanced trait once a weapon is crafted, Guardians may begin to increase its level by using it in activities and by defeating enemies. This is where the bulk of your crafting playtime will be. The more you use your weapon, the faster you'll unlock its potential. 
full potential. Enhanced stats and traits can be unlocked when reaching higher levels, granting slight bonuses to your weapons capabilities. Our goal through this system is to give players a reason to invest in their weapons far beyond what Masterworking could offer in the past. Each weapon can now act as a long tail pursuit as you look to make your freshly crafted weapon the best it can be. So here's the reason I think uh, you're going to be able to actually change your frame because right here, as you guys can see, the high impact frame is being highlighted, which means that I would not be surprised if you're actually going to be able to choose what you want, which is wild because a lot of a lot of weapons are going to be are going to have like go to frames, of course, like for me. An auto rifle, I would probably either go with high impact frame or the rapid fire frame. Either or, honestly. I like both of them anyways. But like hand cannons, you can choose. I Honestly, the 140s for me would probably be everyone's choice. Depending on like the rolls that you can get on on the weapons though, it could be, it could make more sense to do make it a 120 or a 180. Like it, this has a lot of potential. It's super dope. I really appreciate it. Uh, the fact that we can we can literally do, do anything we want with the weapon. I mean, it looks like we can do literally anything with the weapons. Aside from obviously certain perk combinations will not be in certain weapons. I th I think that's okay. Uh, but yeah, it can be intimidating to start making decisions on how to build your weapons. So we are also giving you the ability to reshape your crafted weapons in the Enclave if you want to mix up the components of your weapons after you f uh, finish them. You can switch up what barrels, mags, or traits you choose so you don't feel like you've got locked down on one path. This is also really cool because it doesn't mean that, oh, uh, I it didn't say, uh, it didn't say the frame so you are or you are straddled into the same frame which i think that's that's fair i think that's super fair uh but you can change the barrel mags and traits i think that's super dope i think it's super cool that they allow us to actually just reshape it because at that point let's say you're not feeling a certain combination you don't have to be like well fuck i i wasted all of this resource no like you can just reshape it and use another co combination if you want it also gives us a lot more attachment to the weapon that we're using because that means we can literally change it on the fly whenever we want i think that's super cool uh i think a great way to enhance this would be to give us two perks uh two perk choices at the end for like the ultimate mastery like the we're all we're like we're done like this is like the best the weapon can be i feel like that would be super cool uh yeah this is this is really cool i did not expect weapon crafting to be this in depth considering what we saw in curse of osiris but i mean thank god it's not like curse of osiris as guardians begin to embrace this new system you'll begin to see how legends rise some will prefer hockey and other other foundries others may dabble in new weapons from redacted we're excited to see which weapons you embrace Excited? Well, I'm excited to see what redacted means. Mementos. While the majority of your crafting experience will be dedicated to mixing, matching, and enhancing traits, there's also an opportunity for a bit of customization when it comes to appearances and activity specific trackers. At launch, one weapon memento will become available for players to earn through Gambit, unlocking a Gambit themed appearance and tracker. Rank up your weapon to max level, head back to the Enclave, and apply your freshly earned memento for some sweet flair. More of these will come online through Trials of Osiris and the Grandmaster Nightfalls. We have more plans for mementos down the line and are excited to introduce new endgame rarity cosmetic item for players to chase as they build out their new arsenal of weaponry. So that's cool. I think this is super dope. It does worry me that they say uh, we're excited to introduce a new endgame like cosmetic essentially that's the one that kind of worries me because immediately my thought is how are they going to monetize this because clearly everything is monetized in this game which is stupid as fuck but uh evidently it's gonna get monetized they said cosmetic you know you know some people in bungie are like cosmetic how we how we how we planning to make our our good money here sir huh huh and that's my hands rubbing together because obviously that's what they would do so this is cool but it's also like well where's the where's the monetization going to come from because you guys clearly are going to do something like that uh 
Exotic crafting. Legendary weapons aren't the only thing that you'll be able to craft. The upcoming is Osteo Strega Exotic SMG and three class unique exotic glaives can also be crafted through the Enclave once you find their respective patterns, of course. Can I just say how much the fucking Hunters one's just complete ass? I hate it. Uh, <laughs> while legendary weapons can be crafted from the ground up, exotic crafting is more about the fine tuning, something with a defined identity you may have. The opportunity to customize things like barrels or stocks while preserving the exotic look and feel looking for a longer range profile for the weapon or opt it opting to shred through your enemies up close and personal through the enclave you can just do that all right folks we're at the end of our weapon crafting preview will you have questions undoubtedly blah, blah, blah. this is all this i'm like we're done so I'm pretty excited uh, for the crafting now that I've seen a little bit more of it. I mean, obviously, I'm going to temper my expectations because at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they monetize it in some really gross way. Like, I don't know. Do you want more than two weapons to be craftable? Here, pay us more and you'll get one more. I don't know, something like that. I just, I'm jaded. I know I'm jaded, but like Bungie gives me every right to be jaded. Uh... So this is cool. Like I said, I I feel like the crafting is gonna be it, it's gonna become something really really cool. Unfortunately, it, I still do think it's gonna homogenize a lot of the weapons, especially the new weapons. I feel like people are just gonna go on YouTube and, of course, content creators are gonna be like, "This is the best weapon for con." What's that called? What's that? Come to pass, like, <clears throat> or this is the best uh, rotation for forensic nightmare. Uh, this is the perfect come to pass, you know, fucking videos like that. And because people don't want to think they're just going to immediately be like, okay, what's the best role for this? Oh, okay, that, okay, I'm going to go for it. Not saying like, I'm going to like get the, because I'm definitely going to have like specific ones that are just kind of like obvious, like come to pass. If it has ambitious assassin or is it? No, not ambitious. If it has a subsistence with rampage, obviously I'm going to get that. And obviously everyone's going to get that. It just makes sense. That's a bread and butter uh, build right now. But it's, I hope, I really hope that, that I see a little bit more variation and experimentation with this because that's literally what this is about. This is about experimenting with new stuff and hopefully the, the perk pool is really massive or not even massive, just like big enough to be like, oh shit, like I would love to see the, the perk pool be as big as the the activity weapons, the, the Vanguard weapons, like the ones that have like the really big perk list. I would love it to see that. I would love to see that because then at that point, people can really experiment and see like, oh, well, I've never used this. How does this work? And then people like, I'm immediately like, oh fuck, this is so cool. Uh, cause I'm definitely going to do that. Like the SMG, I'm, <laughs> this SMG is definitely going to be a lightweight frame cause lightweight frames are the best, I think. And then for everything else, I'll probably do like, I'll have like a PVP one and a PVE one, obviously. Uh, or I, again, I, like I said, if they have the option where you, oh, you're masterwork the shit out of it. Like, and not even masterwork, but like you completed it. This is the best of the best. We'll give you two more perks. Bro, at that point, I'm like legitimately going to have a PvP and a PvE perk. Uh, same thing, like all the weapons, honestly, all the weapons from uh, Witch Queen, I'm just going to do that because it makes just a lot of sense to me. So we're already at what? Oh, we're already at 14 minutes and we still got a chunk away. So this honestly is just explaining why the pinnacle uh, weapons left, which makes sense. Um, they're basically saying that they, they didn't want, uh, like, I'll, I'll just read here. The intent as of season 12 is that the per a pursuit weapon should be a solid weapon, roughly 70% of a god roll in its archetype with perk options that will work well in PvE and PvP, and which can be reliably obtained without a huge grind. So the other problem, uh, at least right, right, right here, was the fact that, like, Basically, all the PvP uh, pinnacle weapons were mandatory for PvE or becoming ex incredibly unpleasant to play against or so strong that no other weapon in the class could compete in PvP. Example is Night Mountaintop and Not Forgotten. Any of you that remember the Not Forgotten, uh, Mountaintop, Recluse, all of those metas, you guys will know why p pinnacles were, were taken away, which is why I completely understand why pinnacles were taken away. Uh, I just think... Uh, pers it's this is this is a fair assessment of pinnacles to pursuit weapons i feel like 
uh, pinnacle weapons were a little too strong. The PvP ones specifically were just like outright broken at, at some points. Like Recluse was fucking busted. Mountaintop, I don't think was busted. It was just that the fact that shooting in a straight line was so powerful that you really couldn't do anything about it. Not Forgotten was definitely busted. I don't want to hear anything. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the other thing I found I found interesting was the fact that they said that pursuit weapons should be like roughly seventy percent of a god roll, which I'm okay with considering like the god roll like the god god rolls the best of the best should come out from high-end activities like nightfalls and raids and whatnot that's the only thing is sometimes it just doesn't that's not the case sometimes uh the pursuit weapon is the best because for example like i adored adored is a good sniper rifle but better sniper rifles shipped alongside it or since i don't remember like when a door first came out, I was just using a door and I don't remember any other sniper rifles. So that's problematic in my opinion, because no other sniper was like really in my head. Uh, and with that, let's look at the reckless endangerment pursuit weapon. This weapon is coming in season 16 and introduces a new steady hands perk for a massive handling boost after a kill plus snapshot sights. There are several other shotguns in the release with more sought after PVP and PVE perks. This looks pretty cool. That this looks this kind of looks like uh that the grenade launcher. I forget what the, the grenade launcher is. It's one of my favorite too. It's an exotic. It doesn't matter. It looks pretty cool. Uh hopefully it comes with some decent PvE rolls, because if it doesn't, then I'm just gonna roll for other PvE web shotguns or just use the ones I already have. Origin traits. Alright, this is my might this might piss people off a little just because uh well, you'll see. We've been talking about the difficulty of making different weapons of the same type feel unique for years, and at this point, or years at this point, and in the Witch Queen, we're doing something about it. Every weapon that's new or returning in the Witch Queen will have an origin trait determined by its source in the third trait column. So I don't know if you guys actually saw, but it's up here. No. No. Where is it? I know I saw it. Also, I apologize. Uh, the way I'm editing this, I'm not gonna. I'm just a little too tired to uh, to make it all fancy. So you guys are gonna have to like bite the bullet with me. Um, where is it? Oh, here. It is. So right here, this is the third one. So this is gonna be something else. That's a new perk too, and this one too. Uh, this one right here. This is gonna be the the origin trait, which is pretty cool. Uh, every weapon that's new. I already read that. Uh, this is the problem. This is this is probably where people are gonna get mad a little, and I completely understand. Every weapon that's new and returning in the Witch Queen will have an origin trait determined by its source in the third column, including all new legendary weapons and all returning trials, Iron Banner, and Nightfall weapons. Origin traits will not appear on new drops of a weapon. They won't be retroactively added to old weapon old drops. Um. So the, the way I read this was you have to get your old weapons back. Uh, all the god rolls you got, you have to all get them all back, which it's a, it's, a, it's a bad and a good thing, I guess, because it's good because it means you have to actually go out of your way to get new stuff, which means play the content. But it's also just like, I already have it. Like, I don't want to farm it again because some of these weapons were a bitch to farm. Specifically, like... Iron Banner, bro? Like, Iron Banner and Trials weapons, these two are bitches to fucking farm weapons. Uh, Trials is a little bit better because you can target farm now, but Iron Banner is absolutely fucking atrocious, and I do not want to farm my new weapon. Like, I do not want to farm my... What's this shotgun called? Oh my god. You. Some people already might not know, or might know what I'm talking about, because this shotgun, I love this shotgun, it's one of my favorite shotguns, I've, I've said this on fucking multiple videos, it's one of my favorite shotguns, the Reese Walker, I do not want to re-farm for my god roll Reese farm, or it's not even, I'm missing a good master work, but other than that, I have full choke, I have assault mag, I have slideways, and I have iron reach. I don't want to farm for another one unless you give me targeted loot. After that, we're golden. I'll fucking do it because I play Iron Banner a fuck ton. So just make Iron Banner better and this change probably won't be bad, I guess. I don't know. Uh, these traits vary in effect, but the guideline is that they either have high uptime and medium power effects or low uptime and high power. 
these 14 origin traits in total shipping in the witch queen in season 16 and we expect to ship around three new ones each season after season 16 for example one for season 17 one for the raid or dungeon and one for the seasonal event until we have a new until we have one for each event that's pretty cool when we refresh old weapons from a given source for example an existing raid or old pool of seasonal weapons we may create a new origin trait at the same time that's pretty cool so here are their origin traits trials of osiris alacrity or alicerity i don't know gain increased reload stability reload stability aiming aim oh god i can't read today gain increased reload stability aim assist and range when you are the last living member of your fire team or running solo that's fucking great finally we've been bitching about this forever i'm happy we're finally getting it not only that i'm i'm very much appreciative of the fact that it says running solo which means lost sectors rumble anything that you do solo i'm guessing solo like dungeons solo insert everything here i i feel like this is going to be a great change plus 20 reload plus 20 stability plus 10 aim assist and then plus 10 range i think that's super dope nightfall strikes stunning recovery stunning a champion partially refills your magazine triggers health regeneration and improved recovery for a short duration this one is fucking awesome as well because it's nightfall but it's also strikes i'll I'll explain that in a bit, but grant 60 health instantly and plus 40 recovery for three seconds. Wild, very wild. I very appreciate, oh God, this is gonna be fun. Uh, this is gonna make nightfalls a little bit more easier. Not like, oh my God, they're fucking easy now. It's just gonna make them like, oh, thank God. Uh, Crucible, one quiet moment. Grants increased reload speed when out of combat. 40 plus 40 reload stat when out of combat, having dealt or received damage in four seconds. This one's gonna be really cool. Uh, especially if you have a really slow loading weapon, because once you're once you're done with an engagement, you can back out, wait the four seconds, and then you'll get that increased reload. And then at that point, just reload and you're already ready for the next fight. This is gonna be very useful for when you're out of combat. Uh, but it's going to be very niche when you actually see it come to fruition as in like after the four seconds you reload and you see someone coming up and you're like right done you're probably not going to see that a lot but the moments you do you're going to be like oh thank god i had this strikes vanguard vindication final blows with this weapon grant a small amount of health small equals seven health Anytime it makes sense due to the source activity, a weapon will have multiple origin traits selectable. For example, Nightfall weapons can be select between Nightfall and Vanguard traits. Awesome. Trials of Osiris weapons can select between Trials or the Crucible traits. Super dope. The Pursuit weapon can select between the Gambit, Vanguard, or Crucible traits since it can be acquired from any of these. We didn't see a Gambit one, uh, which... I wouldn't be surprised if it has something to do, to do with either invading or killing an invader or if they just give us a choice at that point which wouldn't make sense because it's so varied or they just give us a bonus to everything which i think would be probable uh, actually probably not because uh, well, well, it could be something along the lines of each kill gives you x amount of bonus or something to something or damage i highly doubt it's going to be damage though but most likely each kill will give you I don't know something uh as an invader you get something i don't know they, they could do a lot with it weapon foundries i'm not reading all this because it's lore so if you want to read it by all means but in season 16 we're replacing the old world loot pool with 12 new weapons in the style of destiny one destiny two year one foundry weapon sets three weapons each from the suros Om omelon and hake and vice foundries plus one foundry each weapon for each of or for each vanguard gambit and crucible each weapon will come with a foundry origin trait themed around the, that foundry's personality so suros energy reloading grants this weapon bonus handling reduces incoming flinch for a short time that's pretty cool uh 40 handling is wild uh <laughs> oh shit that's super wild uh 20% flinch resistance for six seconds, six seconds after reloading. So, does that mean there's there a sort of shotgun? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure there is. Pretty sure. Yeah, that's, oh, I don't know if it, we'll see. Uh, that's pretty cool because then at that point, you can have a shotgun. Well, I guess there's no uh, aggressive frame shotguns for Suros, I guess. Never mind. 
Um, still, though, 40 handling is pretty wild. Hockey breach armaments. This weapon deals increased damage against vehicles, turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. Turrets include stasis turrets. Plus 15 to vehicles, plus 30% to destruction and turrets. This one's cool. I just don't see the reason for vehicles, considering it's so rare for us to see vehicles, unless we're talking like uh, the tanks from everything. Like everything usually has a tank, so... I mean, I guess that's cool if that, I don't know. When, when I see this, I immediately think, oh shit, we're getting, we're getting, um, arms, arms race, I think it's called from Destiny 1, uh, where it was just basically a big ass map with, with vehicles and whatnot. At that point, I'd be so fucking down with it because there were some that had turrets. There were some that had a lot of vehicles. So this would make a lot more sense for me, but I mean, that ne that's never happening. Uh, Omelon fluid dyna dynamics. This weapon has increased reload speed and stability for the time for the top half of the magazine. Stability maxed plus 20, reload max 30, and reduces as the magazine gets lower. So that's pretty cool. I mean, eh, Omelon, uh, eh, not that big a fan about that. Vice Stinger, chance on damage to partially refill this weapon's magazine. Ew. Oh wait, damage on you? That's not bad. Does it work on tick damage? Because couldn't you theoretically, <clears throat> couldn't you theoretically like uh, stand on a fire that a f that a hive drops, and then just keep shooting, and then the chance might proc eventually. And then if you're like a tank or a healer or whatever, uh, or tank, if you're a titan or a warlock, then can't you just like overheal it or be in a bubble? Or there's a lot of questions to this one, but this one's really cool. In addition to the foundry origin trait, each weapon, each foundry weapon's perk pools lean into that foundry's identity. Big damage for Hake, consistency for Suros, ability tie-ins, and weird stuff for Omelon, and never stop firing for Vice. Oh god. So, you're telling me you're gonna have like... Fuck, oh my god. I can already see the, like, the nutty combinations people are gonna be doing, because if no, never stop being... Never stop firing from Vice, but Vice also gets a chance to get you your full magazine on damage. Then we could probably see like a what's it called subsistence with Vice Stinger just being like I'm I never stop firing. Oh my god! Foundry weapons that drop from a source aside from the world pool can switch between the Foundry trait and that tr source's trait. This doesn't simp this doesn't apply that Foundry weapons will be common outside the world pool. For example, a roll on the new new gambit hockey impact auto rifle herod c might look like this corkscrew rifling polygonal rifling armor piercing rounds flared magwell uh, perpetual motion focus fire invading tracker gambit origin trait oh hockey breach armaments hockey origin trait kill tracker see below range master we know you haven't brought back all of your favorite foundry wep weapon types, but don't worry, you can expect to see weapon foundries receive a new addition each season for the year following the Witch Queen, with some fun surprises thrown in later. So we're, are we going to see some foundry weapons from uh, Season of the Forge? Because like that'd be fucking, oh my god, bro, we're going to do it, we're going to see it. We're going to see all the foundry weapons come back, and it's probably going to be the wildest year for Destiny 2, because Season of the Foundry was probably one of the most beloved seasons weapon wise because all of the weapons were literal fire they all fucking hit like all of them were good i can't even i can't even think of like well what about no all of them were good so this is gonna be wild uh global all right this is where the some uh this is where some fun begins this rest of this section will be more of patch notes preview feel uh basically let's just go through it real as fast as i can Kill trackers were once one reason to master work a weapon, but we now see no reason to gate these behind master working. So I've already read this. This basically just means that master working just gives you the, the, the bonus to stats. That's it. It does nothing else anymore. So this will literally just be for PVP at this point. Do you want the extra range or the extra? Let's be real. Everyone wants, wants range. Do you want the extra range, the extra reload, the extra stability, the extra handling? Uh, some people might are gonna say, yeah, I actually do, and some other people are gonna be like, there, there's really no reason. The change is so subtle that it doesn't matter, even though some people would argue that. Uh, so I don't know. I, I might master work now, I might not, I don't know. It depends if, this, if the weapon's a PvP weapon or not.
Following the armor team's footsteps, weapon mods are for legendary weapons are now free and instant to insert. Dope as fuck. We like to see that. We believe that many pain points of, of special weapons and crucible are exacerbated, exasperated by how easy it is currently to acquire special ammo. And while we've touched this in the past, we're making a further adjustment now. Players now only drop one special ammo on death or equivalent, no matter how much they had or no matter how much they were carrying, as long as they weren't completely empty. The maximum you can pick up uh, off a special brick is one for a shotgun, uh, fusion rifle or sniper rifle or equ equivalent for other weapons. Scavenger mods add this add to, uh, add to this as normal, but we'll be evaluating their place in crucible in the future. Players quickly found another way to <laughs> execute the quick quick swap glitch, so we've fixed another animation cancel. So that's gonna be rough, legitimately rough. Uh, all the stuff at the be below is just little changes to to the archetypes, which I don't. Well, let's fuck it. Let's go since we're already this long. Might as well just go all the way. Season thir season fifteen fusion rifle rework had a lot of moving parts. Rapid fire precision and adaptive fusions came out of this season but all quite strong but high fusion high impact fusions are hurting we've definitely seen all fusion rifle subfamilies occupy different roles and want to maintain the large differences in charge time to keep these distinct for now so we're nudging damage up to make it easier for these to land kills at a at range in pvp and we are bumping the pve damage scaler that said we'll keep an eye on how they're doing and we may just charge time down to a smidge in the future in the future release in a future release, increased high impact fusion rifle damage per bolt from 62 to 64. This doesn't seem like a lot, but it allows more rolls to cross bolts, uh, bolts to kill threshold. Increased high impact fusion rifle PVE damage bonus from 15% to 20%. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool considering uh, there's one current fusion rifle that's being used a lot, rightfully so. It's a lot of fun. If I can find it. Uh, glacial chasm uh especially if you have if you got the god roll with which was subsistence and re reservoir burst so this is going to make uh proccing that a lot easier we like that the crowd control capabilities of breach grenade launchers in pve have taken off but as it stands there isn't a meaningful trade-off for the added utility that blinding and concussion grenades give give you and it's unreasonable that a way to really annoy other players in PvP can also one-shot them. Reduce blinding and con concussion grenade damage by 25%. Eh. That's, that's a little rough. Uh, rocket launcher subfamilies have liked meaningful differences for a while now, and their free tracking precisions are flat out better, so we're pushing them further apart by adjusting damage. We may take a deeper look at rocket launchers later. Oof. Damage adjusting adjustment by subfamily. Precision is 0 0.95. Uh, high impact is 0 0.01. Adaptive is 0. Point, uh, wait, 1.05. And aggressive is 1.05 as well. What the fuck? Is, what, 0 0.5 for both. Well, whatever. Uh, took a big swing at sniper rifle aim assist based on zoom in Beyond Line. Have, and having seen this play out, are revisiting the tuning on the zoom based aim assist scaling. Low zoom snipers got more of an aim assist reduction than they needed and high zoom are getting some pretty silly headshots right now. Reduced variance and aim assist scaling between low 35 zoom and high high zoom which is 60 zoom sniper rifles. Cone angle scaler increased by 25% uh, negative? I don't know. Uh, by Increased by 25% <clears throat> on low zoom reduced by 9% on high zoom. Pulse rifles take Take slightly too long to kill red bar enemies in PvE. We're buffing their damage versus miners by 10%. If you want, but if you want a, oh my god, but if you want exotic pulse rifles to feel better at this point, oh boy, keep reading. Oof, 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 what's happening? I, I forgot this part, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, exotic weapons, exotic primary weapons and traits, oh, that's right, they're getting an increase uh, versus miners by 40 fucking percent. Oof. This is going to be wild. Chaperone is getting reduced 
Uh, reduce passive range buff from 2 meters to 0 0.5 meters. That's fucking rough. Duality is getting reduced passive range buff in slug mode when aiming down sights from 1.25 meters to 0 0.5 meters. Pellet mode is unaffected. The the on black wings damage buff no longer cleaves on reload. So that's pretty good, I guess. Teraba. Oh my god. This change made me kind of hard when I saw it. Now reduces perk progress by half instead of clearing it on weapon stow. Let's go. Finally. Increased ravenous beast duration increase for damaging a player slightly. So this is good change. This is gonna this is gonna like bring this weapon back a lot because it was so so fucking rough playing with this gun getting killed or not even getting killed but not being able to switch out a weapon like let's say for example a guy's like running at you you could just shoot him with an smg dude most likely has a shotgun an aggressive shotgun you could switch to your shotgun but you're gonna use lose all of your all of your progress so this is a great change thank you bungie we've been bitching about this for a long time ruinous effigy i stopped reading after this i think Riven Ruinous Effigy has been overdue for a look at, at its Beyond Light nerf, the nerf to damage dealt while guarding. Uh, so we're increased the damage dealt by guarding with a transmutation sphere by 66%, 30% against players. Note transmutation sphere multi kills now count for or, uh, generation armor mods. Previously, only kills with the beam would trigger this. That's pretty cool. Luminous stats. What? Ooh, increased range stat from 44 to 40, 59. Dope. Increased base stability stat from 46 to 56. Also dope. Sorry, F Thorn fans. Thorn is already strong and popular, and a similar buff would turn it into a monster. This is true. Uh, Age Receptor initially implementation used super regeneration scalers, which had very, very weird effects in the activities that also had scalers. So we've rebuilt it to turn off regeneration while active and have impl implemented a slow, slower drain using a different method. Fixed being able to activate or continue using empowered mode while suppressed or stasis encased. Uh, rebuilt the perk used to modify sup uh, used to mod modify sup supercharge rate. Now freezes supercharge or super recharge and re uh, deducts super directly. Fix fixing several issues with activities that change charge rate and outliers for recharge based on intellect stat super should now drain more slowly while empowered cool dead man's tail okay so i know a lot of pve or yeah a lot of pve players are going to be fucking mad rightfully so because dead man's tail is getting a bad nerf in my opinion and i say this because as someone who uses dead man's tail in pvp or pve I'm actually kind of mad about this one. Reduce the catalyst hip fire rate of rate of fire from 150 to 130. Bro, that's just a little bit faster than 120s. No, <laughs> this is horrible. I don't like this change. Uh, I think any PvP -er, uh would rightfully tell you that they don't want to see a gun nerfed this bad in PvP. Just. Uh, just to like spite it because then it's gonna hurt PvE, which is like in my opinion the bulk of the game Not saying PvP is not important. It definitely is and has literally Stay uh, made us afloat while we were in like really slow seasons or god forbid the destiny one days I'm just saying I don't think nerfing a PvE weapon or nerfing a weapon should it should affect pve this badly because this is a bad nerf in my opinion this definitely is shitty so that's unfortunate <clears throat> lawrence driver and arbalist increased flinch received great uh i know a lot of people have been bitching about that full runners ammo academy has been very fairly conservative which means it's getting an increase in pickup from two to three from a special ammo brick that's pretty cool uh <clears throat> these changes are just changes to weapons that didn't get changes. I'm not going to read that just because it's not important to me. Uh, but essentially, it just means that Dire Promise is getting plus four range, plus three stability, and then negative four aim assist. Waking Vigil is getting six plus range, five plus ra uh, stability, and negative three aim assist. Jack Queen, uh, Jack Queen King three, plus three range, plus three stability, and then negative eight uh, aim assist. Spare Rations, plus four range, plus four stability, and negative nine aim assist. 
Bell Winters is getting a plus 15% on spread angle because it's still busted. Uh, and then the Icolos SMGs, plus one zoom, negative five range, negative seven stability, negative eight handling, and then negative five aim assist, which is horrid. Um, there are changes to perks as well, which some are good, some are bad, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember. We want players to be able to choose to be to build into hip fire more easily, so we're adjusting the hip fire perk grip perk to support this. Now increase damage, fall off, start, and end distance by twenty percent, except on shotgun sniper rifle. <laughs> okay, except on shotgun sniper rifles and fusion rifles. Adagio often felt like it changed a weapon subfamily to the next slowest rate of fire, but worse, in particular when comparing damage fall off. Increased duration from 5 to 7 seconds. What? Increased damage bonus except on bows and fusion rifles from 25% to 30%. Now adds a plus 10 range stat. Added a timer to the buff next to our text to make it easier to tell when it's going to expire. That's good. Dual loader is okay on paper, but in practice that reload speed is pretty painful. It's pretty dog shit is, is the actual correct. Yeah. Reduce reload stat. Uh, penalty from negative 50 to a negative 35, which is pretty good, I guess. Um, danger zone. I don't really care about this perk, but essentially reduce self damage scaler for, uh, for grenade launchers combined with other scalers. This ends up reducing self damage from 1.25 to 1.75. I wonder if this is all grenade launchers or it's just when a grenade launcher has danger zone. <clears throat> Tap the trigger is the meta breaking perk on a particular fusion rifle. Uh, it's the one that Zer sold. It's getting nerfed. <laughs> on, a, on, on fusion rifles only, reduce stability bonus from four, plus 40 to a plus 10. Change max recoil angle scale from 0 0.5 to 0 0.875 point. Oh my god. Change error angle scale from 0 0.9 to 0. Point, oh god. Unchanged on all other weapons. So yeah, that happened. Head seeker, extended buff duration from 0 0.17 to 0 0.3 seconds. Okay. Uh, let's talk about eager as oh my god so you guys remember how they said they were saying that they were they were not gonna nerf eager's edge or whatever i everyone and their mom was like they're not gonna they're not gonna nerf it dude like that's how it was intended to be uh reduce lunge distance benefit while airborne by 25 percent now caps maximum player airborne velocity to a fairly high value while active so they they nerfed it they did it and the reasoning is we have a fresh raid and other fun content coming with the Witch Queen and want to ensure we retain challenge behind our upcoming rewards. I mean, I think a better choice would have just been don't allow that perk in the game while all this content is active. Like, if you want to retain the prestige of the raid, just just don't have that shit active like oh yeah this this perk is unfortunately not active while the bro like at that point just do that for all like every raid going forward Th these perks this weapon this that this and that are a little bit too strong or they can easily remove the prestige and value of a given item and or experience just turn it off while the you did I don't, didn't you guys do that uh for beyond light Pretty sure he did. Either way, this is a shitty change and I'm not liking it. I love Eager's Edge and I knew that shit was gonna get fucking destroyed. So, what time, how, how's our time? 43 minutes, okay, well I'm just gonna, I'm gonna post the whole thing. Occasionally we'll shelf perks because they're not working for some time, too strong or too too weak. Uh, Bottlemoose, Grief, and Celerity are getting uh, shelved obviously because of the new origin traits, makes sense. Underdog, thank god, fuck that trait. Shield Disorient, I I never use this, I don't think anyone ever used this, I'm only in niche situations. Aerosol, I don't even know what the fuck Aerosol is, I don't remember that. Uh, though note that this may get a redesign in the future. The near future, in Season 17 we'll have a set of PvP focused weapon changes including new ways for players to build for flinch resistance, literally negating the flinch uh, at the, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's funny to me because it's like, okay cool, like we, ner we nerfed the two linear fusion rifles that are pissing people off. But in future seasons, we're going to actually give you ways to actually build into flint resistance. So that way you can just keep doing what you're doing, G. Okay. 
Balance, turn, <laughs> balance tuning for primary weapons. Looking at you, pulse rifles, lightweights in particular. Special weapon tuning, snapshot sight feeling mandatory on sniper rifles and PVP. Other balance changes. Another PVP special ammo economy change if needed. Adjustment how zoom outliers both low and high affect the performance of subset of weapons, i.e. the scope column shouldn't be the most important thing on a weapon. That makes absolutely no sense. It should definitely be the most important. <laughs> what? This could take various forms, but the intent is to bring both high and low outlier towards the average to the overall benefit of the weapon archetype. We're also adjusting several much requested uh, exotics alongside with legendary perks. That's pretty much it for your TWAB. Uh, there's nothing much here other than the fact that all these weapons are going to be shelved. Um, which is fun because if you don't have a good igneous hammer, uh, Solus Scar, I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, the, swar the Swarm, this, 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 this. This one, bro, this one is going to bring, bring in so much fucking FOMO. It's not even funny. Like, you guys think I'm joking right now? But this SMG is fucking wild. So I have one. It's not even the God God roll. I think it's decent. Like, I'm like, uh, I can use this. Like, I, I definitely want a better one. But... At this point, I'll take it because it has kill clip on it, but it doesn't have uh, the other perk. I forget what it's called, but mine has threat detector and kill clip with a range master work. So it's pretty decent. There's some people that have like the godliest roles of this and best believe like SMGs are probably going to become meta in one at one point of these seasons. And people are going to be like, well, I don't have multi max CCX, so I might as well just give up. Um, time Soar Inspires, okay. Guiding Sight and uh, Steady Hands at 120. We'll see. Two 120s leaving is pretty bad considering if they are meta again. Two of the best ones are leaving. I don't know. I don't think this is a good idea. Uh, there's definitely easier ways to like accommodate this. But that's pretty much your TWAB. Let me know what you guys think. I'm no Aster Cross, but I did want to make this video because a lot of changes are very important. These are Witch Queen changes that we're going to be going through. Um, and I do apologize that I didn't do it how I usually do it. It's just this is so much that I was like, I'm just going to post the me actually going through it. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on my social media, I'll link to the description below. I thank you all for coming to this point and I'll see you guys later.